Hey folks, for this screencast, we're going to do least squares regression of a plane. So I'm going to just start from scratch like I always do. I'm going to make an x vector that goes, uh, I'm going to use the libs, actually I'm going to, I'm going to do my standard clear uh, CLC, close all, and then I'm going to make a lens space. I'm just going to make an easy plane. I'm going to go from 10 to 10 with 100 points. Uh, let's, do, let's do five points. And then I'm going to make my y vector. Uh, lin space minus 10 to 10, 5. The reason why I'm saying vector is because if I hit F5 here and throw this on, oops, throw this on the desktop. What do I want to call this? Uh, least squares regression plane dot m. Great. And I'm going to change the directory. So if I type in x vector down here and hit enter. You see, and maybe it's hard to read, but that is a vector. It doesn't, it's not two-dimensional. Now, in order to plot a plane, you, you kind of need two dimensions. At least in, in MATLAB, you do. In, in math, right, if you, let's say we wanted to make the plane, you know, z equals 5 times x plus 6 times y, you know, something like that, you, that's a, a two-dimensional plane plotted in three dimensions, but in order to plot it in MATLAB, or Octave in this case, you need to have the x and y coordinates be a grid. And that's accomplished by making an, a, a mesh grid. So I'm going to say x matrix is, and actually you have to do this at the same time. So I'm going to do a bracket and a comma. y matrix is equal to, and I'm going to do mesh grid of x vector and y vector, right? Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and if I hit F5 on that, and then if I type in X matrix, now you see that this is a two-dimensional grid, okay? And it starts from minus 10 to 10, uh, just like X does. And actually, let's make this a little different. So let's have Y go from 20 to 20, so you can kind of see the difference. So I'm going to run it again. X vector goes from minus 10 to 10. Y vector goes from minus 20 to 20. Notice that it's the same number of points, because I still made the lint space command. The, the 5 here says that there's 5 data points, so it's the, the resolution has gone down in the Y domain. Now, if I type in X matrix, now this is going to be kind of interesting. You go from minus 10 to 10 here, but if you type in Y matrix, that goes from minus 20 to 20. Now, notice how... Let me scroll this up. Notice how... You know, this goes from minus 10 to 10 left to right, but this goes from minus 20 to 20 top to bottom. And that's because it's it's plotting on like an X, Y plane. And so it's basically saying like there's a coordinate at negative 10, negative 20. There's a coordinate at negative 10, negative 10, negative 10, 0, and so on and so forth. So it occupies that whole two-dimensional space, X, Y. But then we're going to rotate that space and add a Z component. And that is where we're going to say Z matrix is 5 times x matrix plus 6 times y matrix. Boom. And then I'm going to go ahead and plot. Uh, I'm going to mesh, sorry. I'm going to mesh x matrix, y matrix, and z matrix. And I'm going to hit F5 here. And we should just have a nice kind of lane. Uh, I don't want to call it completely lane. But it is a plane in two dimensions. Okay. Now, in order to get the uh, code to actually work the way we want where um, we're actually going to like fit a plane to it, what I'm actually going to do is add a little bit of noise to this. So I'm going to add, uh, I think, how does the rand command work? If I do rand like 10 comma 10, yeah, so that just makes a bunch of random numbers. So I'm going to add rand 5 comma 5, right, because I have five data points. And then the rand command is from 0 to 1, so I'm going to subtract off 0 0.5. So if I do rand 5 comma 5, that is going to give me a bunch of random numbers between uh, 5 columns and 5 rows between 0 and 1. And I'm then going to subtract 0 0.5 from that, so then that's going to give me from negative 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. And then I'm going to multiply that whole thing by 2. Right, so uh, two times all of that, right? And what that's going to give me is a number from minus one to one. And if I keep running this over and over again, you know, I get a bunch of numbers from minus one to one. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the scale of this and we're going to kind of scale it up from there. So right now we're just going to do times two and we're going to plot this and you'll notice that you can hardly see any deviation in the plot at all. So we're going to increase this by, 20, by a factor of 10. So I'm going to multiply by 10 over here and run that. And now we should see, there we go, we see a little bit of irregularities in the uh, thing there. I'm going to go ahead and call this, put this 30 in there. And so now we see we've got quite a little bit of noise. Now, instead of meshing this, I'm going to just plot. I hope this works. X matrix, Y matrix, Z matrix. This may not work. I may have to try something else. What I want to do is I want to plot blue stars instead of. Okay, great. That's fantastic. That totally worked. And so, and then let's throw a grid on here now, grid on, right? And so now what I have is I have a bunch of data points that sort of fit this entire thing. Now, what I want to do is I want to fit this plane to, well, I'm going to add, you know, plus noise, right? What I want to do now is I want to assume Okay, assume that you have the coordinates, right, x, y, and z, but not, you know, the a0, a1, where in this case, a0 is 5 and a1 is 6. Okay, so how do we solve this? Well, what we need to understand is that for every coordinate, z1, you have a0 times x1 plus a1 times y1. And then you've got a z2 in here, which is a, a0 times x2 plus a2, a1 times y2. And this goes all the way down to zn equals, and I guess you could put a sort of dot 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 in here. This goes down to a0 xn plus a1 times yn. And so you basically have n equations. And so what we can do is we can stack these together, right? And so we can have, make a big vector z equals, and this is going to be a, well, first, before we stack these together, you can see that generally you can do, you can say zn, right, is a0 I'm going to say xn space yn times a0, a1. And so this is a one row, two column vector. And then this is a, because that semicolon is there, that is a one column, two row vector. And so what I can do, and this is where I stack them together, is I make a big Z matrix, which is Z1, z2 dot 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 zn and then i make what's called an h vector and i don't know why they call it h but that's just how it is in the nomenclature and this is going to be like x1 yn semicolon sorry y1 semicolon x2 y2 semicolon dot 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 and then semicolon xn yn and so this here is an n by one vector, but this is an n by 2 matrix. And then you have the A matrix, which is just A0, A1, and that is a 2 by 1 matrix. So then the equation is Z equals H times A. And if you look at the inner products, you have an n by 1 equals an n by 2 times a 2 by 1. And the inner products cancel and you get an n by one. And so this equation makes sense. Once you have this in sort of linear form, you use Gauss's equation to solve this. So a star, and it's e, the reason why it's a star is because you're, we're about to do a pseudo inverse, is h transpose h inverse times h transpose times z. Now, that equation I think I've derived in one of my YouTube videos, and if you ask me about it, I can try and link to it. If not, you're basically looking for uh, Gauss's uh, least squares regression rule, 
uh, and, and doing a pseudo inverse to solve this problem. So we need to get MATLAB to do that. But in order to do that, we need to get everything into the proper matrices. So we need to build all of the matrices. So what we need to do is we need to make a double for loop for IDX is one, two, length of X vector, right? And then for JDX is one to length of Y vector. Okay. And oof, I do not like that at all. That's octave trying to like auto complete for me. And basically I'm going to use these two for loops and I'm going to build my matrices. So I've got Z, I've got H, and I don't need A because A is not technically part of the equation. It's part of the solution. Okay. So now Z works like this. Z is just Z stacked with the Z matrix of IDX comma JDX, which is fairly simple. Now the H matrix is, this is where things get tricky. I need to take H and stack it with the X vector of IDX space the Y vector of JDX. Now I'm gonna kind of just guess and check. Here's the thing with random code from the fly. I didn't prepare for this. I don't know if this is right. The way to test it and the what we're going to do is we're actually going to get rid of the noise. Okay. So I'm going to, where was that plot command? There is the plot. I'm going to do a pause here so that it doesn't run after this. There is my data points with no noise in them whatsoever. Now, I'm going to get rid of that pause. If this code works properly, right, with no noise, the solution to this equation should give me A0 A equals 5 and A1 equals 6. If it doesn't, it means I've got a bug in the code. In my opinion, I think that's the best way to code is write, do a problem that you know what the answer is, and then go try something a lot harder, okay? So A star is equal to H transpose times H, and I think I just do I and V, if I recall. Yeah, I and V times h transpose times z and i'm going to run it and it says a star is 12 and 2.5 okay i'm going to pause the video okay remember how i was saying if i pause the video and i came back that's when you watch this youtube video there's just going to be like a discontinuous jump i paused it to figure out why it wasn't working so i said before i'm just going to code this and see if it works i got 12 and 5 which is not right uh well, it said 12 and 5 a second ago. The reason why is because if you look at the Z matrix, the Z matrix is oriented such that the X coordinates go this way, but then the Y coordinates go that way. And so the way that you have to grab the rows and columns of the Z matrix is you actually have to do JDX in this column, which is the rows, and then IDX is the columns. And I verified that here by looking at the fact that the first coordinate in the Z matrix is negative 170. And if you do negative 10 times 5 plus negative 20 times 6, you get negative 170. And then if you do the next coordinate, which is negative 10 times 5 plus negative 10 times 6, that's negative 110, you'll notice that that is down here. So again, the Y coordinate goes down, which is the rows, which is the first element, and then IDX, or the X coordinate, is the columns, which is the second array. And so now when I run it, I get my A matrix at five and six. So what that means is I can now create a Z matrix fit, which is equal to A star of one times X matrix plus A star of two times Y matrix. And then I can mesh X matrix, Y matrix, and Z matrix fit. And if we run this, we should get, oh, I forgot to put a hold on. Let me go ahead and throw a hold on, hold the phone, hold on. Hit F6 instead of F5. So now with no noise, I perfectly fit that plane. And again, whenever you're writing code, try and get the code to solve a problem. Honestly, you should probably do this by hand first to make sure you understand what you're doing. All of this right here that I did, 
I did this pretty quickly in comments, but that's because I've done this by hand. I've been a teacher for almost 10 years or a professor for almost 10 years. So like this is kind of like riding a bike. But if you're a student and you're watching this, I would work this out by hand to make sure you understand that before you even touch the computer. Okay, I mean, you're already touching a computer now or your phone, which is technically a computer. But I would strongly recommend doing this by hand, pen and paper, iPad, tap, stylus, whatever, and doing this with just writing out arithmetic, making sure you understand this. Then do a problem like this where you understand what the answer is supposed to be and then go do something more complicated. So now that I know the code works, I'm going to go ahead and add the noise in there and see what happens. And so now this is kind of interesting is I've added the noise back in. So the blue dots are all over the place and the solution is 4.92 and 5.8, which is pretty freaking close to five and six. Cool. All right. I am going to go ahead and stop the video here. The video is already 15 minutes. I think that's long enough. The code was like 40 lines of code. I'm going to push this to the cloud and I will post the link in my GitHub. If you have any questions, post in the comments, send me an email and I will try and help you out as best as I can. Happy coding.